Welcome to our next monthly rally for DCF. We're delighted that we have got the opportunity to share with you another month and we've got an exciting program ready for you just now. And just as we usually do in our monthly rallies, we have a couple of choruses and a nice hymn and then we get into the visitors for our program today and we'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few moments time. But the first chorus that we want to share with you today is a grand old chorus I know a fount where sins are washed away. I know a place where night is turned to day. So let's sing it. And if you want to join in with us, that would be just wonderful. I know a fount where sins are washed away. Now, you probably know that, but if you didn't know it, let's sing it for you another time and let's really join in together. Here we go. I know a fount where sins are washed away. I know a place where night is turned to day. Burdens are made to see there's a wonder working power in the blood of Calvary Isn't it good to know that? Yes, of course it is. There are many things we are not sure about, other things we don't have any clue about, but it's great to be able to sing I Know a Fount where sins are washed away. Now, here's another one about something we know. I know the Lord has made a way for me. Or the first verse of it, I know the Lord will make a way for me. And then there's a second verse which we are going to sing for you. I know the Lord will make a way verse again. I know the Lord has made a way for me. I know the Lord has made a way for me. So I live for Him each day in the things I do and say. I know made a way for me. Now before we go any further, I'm going to ask uh, Yvonne, that's my wife, Mrs. Stewart, to lead us in prayer and commend us all to the Lord as we commence our program properly today. Let's just pray. 
Lord, we thank you today that we can call you Lord and we can call you Saviour. Mm -hmm. Your name is Jesus because you save your people from their sins. Thank you, Lord, for all you mean to so many of our dear folks here today. So many who can look back to that day, that hour, that moment when they received Christ into their hearts. And we pray this will be a real blessing to them today, especially those who are suffering pain and those who are weak and some, Lord, who have not been well recently. And we pray that as they listen into our program today, their hearts will be lifted up to things above. And so we pray that in every part that you will have all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for dying for us at Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us every day. And now we pray you'll bless us in the rest of our program for your glory. Amen. Amen. Now, we have been hearing very good reports. And it's really great, isn't it, Yvonne, to be getting news back. Uh, what have you been hearing about the programs that have been going out? Well, I've been hearing of some people like the hymn story. Some people love to sing. I've even one little lady in our DCF here in Korean who says she dances to the music. So that's good. And we're glad that you're enjoying it. And then one or two say, I love to hear the accordion. So that's why we bring it every, every week or well, every month with us so that you can hear the accordion, these lovely gospel songs, and of course, the word of God at the end of the service. This week, we're having Pastor Alan Hoy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're glad that he has just moved recently into Portrush. He's just round the corner from us. And Alan has consented to preach the word of God for us later on in our program. And Yvonne has a special hymn story for us today as well about a well-known evangelist that used to serve the Lord here in Northern Ireland, but now he's gone home to be with the Lord. But we'll keep his name a secret until she comes on after we have another hymn. This hymn is about something we do not know. And we're still in the very early months of this year, 2021, and we don't know what lies ahead. And that's what this hymn talks about. I do not know what lies ahead, the way I cannot see. But then there are reassuring words as we go on through this lovely hymn. So we're going to sing it for you now. I do not know what lies ahead, the way I cannot see. Yet one stands near to be my guide, he'll show the way to me. I know who holds the future, and he'll guide me with his hand. With God things don't just happen, everything by Him is planned. So as I face tomorrow, with its problems large and small, I'll trust the God of miracles, give to Him my all. I do not know days of life are mine to spend, but one who knows and cares for me will keep me to the end. I know who holds the future, and he'll guide me with his hand. With God things don't just happen, everything by him is large and small, I'll trust the God of miracles, give to him my all. I do not know the course ahead, what joys and griefs are there, but one is near who fully knows, I trust his loving I know who holds tomorrow, and he'll guide me with his hand. With God things don't just happen, everything by him is planned. So as I face tomorrow, with its problems 
times large and small. I'll trust the God of miracles. Give to him my all. Now, Yvonne was saying a few moments ago that some of you really like accordion music. Well, we have got a special friend. His name is Paul Atchison. And Paul gave us an accordion a musical a few months ago. And we decided that we would put it on our program today. So here we are with Mr. Paul Atchison. He's now pastoring in Newton Arts in the Congregational Church there. And he's playing on his accordion. And he's a really good accordion player. <laughs> you enjoy that? I'm sure you did. Now Yvonne is coming on with her special hymn story for today and then just after she tells the story we're going to have Pastor Alan Hoy as our guest speaker today and after he concludes I will just come on to close the service off. Mr. Newell Grant was one of our country's best known evangelists. He was born in the city of Armagh in Northern Ireland in 1921. One of four children. He had a brother and two sisters. It was a happy family 
and he never forgot his roots nor his native city. He was a bright young man, gifted at sport, especially boxing, swimming and cricket. He was also a talented musician. This musical gift would later be greatly used when he gave his life to Christ and became an evangelist. When he was 17, Noel and a friend were invited by evangelist Bert Wheeler to a gospel mission in the YMCA Hall in Armagh City. He had never been to a mission before. He was immediately stirred by the dynamic preaching of the evangelist Mr William Miller. Although it was his first time to hear the gospel, he responded to the invitation to trust Christ at the end of the service and Mr Miller pointed him to the Lord. The date was 26th of January 1939 and he never forgot that date nor his experience of salvation until his dying day. That night when he arrived home he told his parents Although they did not fully understand what he was talking about, they did not stand in his way. His hymn, My Heart is Rejoicing and I'll Tell You Why, was his own personal testimony. Joseph and Sandra Kennaway from Ballymena are going to sing it for us. They were closely associated with him in his later years. Rejoicing, and I'll tell you why. Tis a story that started way up in the sky. My Savior was willing from glory to come, then to take me at last to the heavenly home. And oft times I wonder where I might have been. If the Savior had led me to wander in sin But I always will praise Him For now I am free Since in love and in mercy He reached unto me Then will you now by faith in his life giving word oh listen to the promise and put away doubt him that comes to me I will never cast out your sins may be many as black as can be but he'll cast them will not be in vain. I hope I will meet you in heaven someday. Oh, then hasten to Jesus. Oh, do not delay. Your sins may be many as black as can be, but he'll cast them away in the depths of the sea. Though habits have held you a captive for years, he will break through them all and will dry up your tears. And though habits have held you a captive for years, he will break through them all and will dry up your tears. 
worked in the civil service motor tax office overlooking the mall in Armagh City, but his chief purpose in life now that he was saved was to serve his Lord and Master. When he was 18, he started to help in missions and meetings all around the area where he lived. He would strap the piano accordion to his back and set off on his motor bicycle to share in testimony and song wherever there was an opportunity. But God was speaking very clearly to the young man about offering his life to God for full-time service. One day he took a piece of paper and made two columns. On one side were his reasons for remaining in his job in the office and staying at home. He would have to give up his financial security, his home, family etc. But on the other side of the page were the gains to be had by obeying God. There was the judgment seat of Christ, the value of precious souls and the eternal reward. As he pondered the options, he decided to leave home and follow the leadings of God. In his very first mission after he left his employment, he asked God for a seal to his decision to go full time into mission work. Imagine his joy when both of his parents trusted Christ during his first mission in Hamilton's Bond Hall near his home. The hymn, Go Through With God, which Mildred is going to sing for us in a few minutes, is his personal testimony of God's call into full-time service. Verse 3 says, The call of God, it is so clear, but friendship's call and home is dear. Ah, lonely was the path he trod. Then wilt thou not go through with God? He joined up with evangelists Bert Wheeler and Matt Boland on the 5th of April 1950. Bert was a concertina player and Noel was a great help to the two older men in various gospel missions and campaigns where he served his spiritual apprenticeship. But Noel Grant is perhaps best remembered as part of an evangelistic duo, Boland and Grant who worked together for some 33 years, conducting gospel missions all over the north of Ireland, occasionally in the south of Ireland, and uh, even into England. But God used them to bring the clear gospel message to thousands of people. They pointed many to the Saviour and encouraged the converts to go through with God and live the Spirit-filled life. After a lifetime of preaching and writing, he went home to be with the Lord on the 19th of May, 2010, age 88. His obituary reads, Noel Grant, beloved evangelist and soul winner, author and hymn writer, passed away on May the 19th, promoted to glory after preaching and singing the glorious gospel message for over 60 years. Now listen to Mildred Rainey as she sings his hymn, Go Through With God, Thy Vows To Pay. Up of thy known ambitions here, another voice is sounding clear. It is the call of God to thee, O oh, leave thy all and follow me. Go through with God thy vows to pay, thy life upon the altar lay. The Holy Ghost will do the rest and bring to thee God's very best So soon eternal morn shall dawn How fast the night is hastening on So soon his lovely face to see How sad to empty hand it be 
through with God thy vows to pay, thy life upon the altar lay. The Holy Ghost will do the rest and bring to thee God's very best. The price is high, severe the test, for those who would enjoy God's best. Surrender all, then take the road with those who will go through with God. Go through with God, thy files to pay, thy life upon the altar lay. The Holy Ghost will do the rest and bring to thee God's very best. Go through with God thy vows to pay, thy life upon the altar lay. The Holy Ghost will do the rest and bring to thee God's very best. Hello folks and uh, welcome to your DCF meeting this month. Thank you so much uh, to Eric for inviting me along uh, to take part this afternoon. It's been a real joy and a real privilege. And, and again, thank you so much for having me. And I trust that you've enjoyed this, well, this different meeting as it's all online. But I hope you've enjoyed it, enjoyed the singing. And now we're coming to God's Word just for a wee moment or two. And I hope that you enjoy that as well. I was wondering what I would just speak about uh, this afternoon. And, and I have to be honest with you. Um, while I was praying about it, I, I was flicking through my Bible and I was going through the Psalms because I just love the Psalms. The Psalms are, are so personal uh, and they seem to just really speak into our hearts and souls at particular times. And, and they just seem to be a reservoir of blessing to us each and every day. And my eyes lit upon Psalm 70. And, and when I began to read it, I, I, it just struck me in a different way. I want to read it to you uh, right now uh, and then just one or two wee thoughts, nothing too long and uh, just a wee devotional thought for you this afternoon. Let me read to you Psalm 70. Remember this is God's word we're reading, it's not man's word and so it's very, very important that we pay attention and we listen to it and that's how you get the good out of it. Uh, so let's listen to Psalm 70. Psalmist says this is a Psalm of David. And he says, make haste, O Lord, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed that confound and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. Let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, ha ha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, let, the, let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer. O Lord, make no tarrying. Amen. And we know that God will bless his word to your heart and to my heart this afternoon. Can I ask you a question? This may be a strange question. I don't know. I don't know. But it's maybe how you feel this afternoon. Are you fed up? In Balamina, we would say, are you scummered? And I'm just asking you this afternoon, are you fed up? Fed up with lockdown? Fed up with the restrictions? Fed up with having to walk the same old path every day when you go out for a bit of exercise? Fed up with not being able to go to work? Fed up with maybe not being able to meet with, with your family the way you want to? Fed up with being afraid and apprehensive about the future? And the list goes on. And let me say this. Listen, we need to stick to this lockdown. We need to see it through. If it helps one person, then it's worth doing. And so we need to stick to it. And I'm all on for that. But the list goes on. 
And even though we want to do our best and we keep to the guidelines and the regulations and all the rest of it, it doesn't stop us from getting fed up. It doesn't stop us from getting scunnered just with the way things are. The same thing every day. And uh, it just becomes very difficult and very tiring to our minds uh, and to our bodies and to our well-beings. Well, when I read the first, the first, what, three verses of this psalm, when it says, when the psalmist says, make haste, O God, to deliver me, make haste to help me, O Lord, let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my, my soul, let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt, let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, ha ha. It just felt to me when I read it, the psalmist here's just scummered. He's just, he's fed up. He's fed up with having to deal with the danger that surrounds him. He's fed up with having to deal maybe with the whinging and the girding of, of, of the people. He's fed up with having to deal with the, the fears that are attacking him in every side. He, he's fed up of having to have to deal with the hurt that's being un, inflicted upon him. He's just, he's just scunnered. He's just fed up. And maybe, maybe that's the way you feel today you're just fed up everything just seems to be crashing down on you pressures of life the uncertainties of the day and what the world calls uncertainties of the day and and those things are, are starting to just really weigh heavily upon your heart and your soul and and you find it difficult just to deal with the things. And even as the people of God, even those of us who are saved, we, we, we are not immune to all these stresses and strains in life. We all have to deal with them. The Lord said, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And so maybe that's how you feel today. But something changes. Something changes here in the last two verses. It just seems to me that the whole attitude of the psalmist here seems to just switch from looking at the circumstances, looking at all the things that are troubling him, looking at all the pressures that he's under, looking at all the threats that surround him. And it seems that that the psalmist now is, is taking his eyes off those things. And he's setting them upon the Lord. Even at the very start of our psalm, he says, Make haste, O God, to deliver me. He, he's starting to set his eyes upon the Lord. And when he does that, things start to change in his life, in his attitude. Listen to what it says in the last, last two verses. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste. Unto me, O God, thou art my help, my deliverer. O Lord, make no tarrying. And I just, I just find it, that everything changed when he got his eyes on the Lord. And I think that's one of the things that we feel at as Christians today. In this world of multimedia, in this world of, of telephones, and I'm recording this on my telephone today, and I hope everything goes well. And our laptops and our tablets. Tablets used to be something you took for a headache. But now we live our lives on our tablets and our telephones and and multimedia on our television screens. And so much it takes up our eyes. (laughs) And we listen to the news and we seem to get focused on the news. But really, we need to get our eyes upon the Lord as Christians. We need to put our trust in him. Because he's the one who changes everything. He's the one who can do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or even think. And here's the psalmist, so surrounded by problems, so surrounded by difficulties, so surrounded by danger, but he's getting his eyes on the Lord. And when he does that, the situation changes because where there was once sorrow, there's now rejoicing and gladness. And that's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing to rejoice. Paul says, be glad in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And he was in the midst of great trials and great pressures and great threat and strains. But he says, the joy of the Lord 
is my strength. And, and I want to tell you, listen, there's nothing like the joy of the Lord. <laughs> listen, there's nothing like the joy of the Lord. To come into God's presence in the morning and just to say, thank you, Lord, for saving me. And I know all this stuff's going on around about, you, about me, but I'm saved. I'm born again of the Spirit of God and I'm rejoicing in that. And when the psalmist gets his eyes on the Lord, sorrow changes into joy and gladness. Where there was a feeling of abandonment. Because he says, make haste, O God, to deliver me. He feels as if the Lord has forsaken him. He feels that God's not there anymore. And, and where there was that sense of abandonment, there's now salvation. For he says, and let such as love thy salvation, say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Maybe that's how you feel today. You feel that God's not near that God has abandoned you, I want to tell you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He sticks closer than a brother. He is always there. Even when we don't feel him there, know his presence there, he is always there because he has promised always to be there. And when we get our eyes on the Lord and not on the circumstances, I want to tell you, so, sorrow changes into joy and, and gladness. Abandonment, my Changes into salvation. And where there was crying. There's now praising. Because he says that God be magnified. And where there was weakness. There's now almighty God. Let God. Let God. Listen. Dear child of God this afternoon. Just let God be God. You know we talk sometimes about. About. What we have to be for God. And I have to be this for God. And I have to be that for God. I can't be anything for God. If I in myself could be something for God. There would have been no need for Calvary. There would have been no need for the Lord Jesus Christ to die there for your sin and for my sin. As Christians, here's what we need to do. I want you to listen to me. We need to let God be God in us. We need to let God do what he wants to do in our lives. And that's what it is here. It's letting almighty God be almighty God. In the midst of all our circumstances. In the midst of all our situations. Folks, it's easy to get fed up. And if that's how you're feeling today. Then I would say to you. Let God be God. Seek the Lord. Because he is a comfort to those that are saved. And I want to tell you, if you're not saved and you're listening or watching this this afternoon and you're not saved, you can't have any of this. Where there's sorrow, there's always going to be sorrow. Where there's abandonment, there's always going to be abandonment. Where there's crying, there'll never be any praising. Where there's weakness, there'll never be God. If you don't know him. As your Savior and your Lord. And I would ask you even today. Listen if you're not saved. Trust Jesus as your Savior and your Lord. Come to know him. Repent of your sin. And I want to tell you. You will know the joy of the Lord. That is your strength. Don't miss out on that. I would say to you this afternoon. But just look at verse 5. Just as I finish. My time's almost gone. I think I've nearly went over my time. But just give me another couple of minutes. Look at verse 5. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer. O Lord, make no tarry. <laughs> Isn't it great, dear child of God, that we can come to our Heavenly Father just the way we are? The psalmist says, I'm poor and needy. Sometimes we try to dress ourselves up. Sometimes we try to put on a face. Sometimes we try to be more spiritual than we really are. Uh, and we think we're full in God, we're not. God just wants us to come the way we are. Just in the midst of all the hassles and the strains, in the midst of all our failures and faults, just come poor and needy before him. Because he knows us. And he invites us to come that way. You know, if you go to the doctor, the doctor can't help you unless you're honest. And in a sense, you know, God can't help you unless you're honest. Yet he come to him just the way you are, poor and needy. But isn't it wonderful that we can trust him for every day? For, it, for the psalmist says, oh God, thou art my help. And the idea is not just today or tomorrow, but every day. 
in every circumstance that we find ourselves in. God is our help for every day. Isn't that wonderful that we can trust him? Isn't it reassuring that nothing's too hard for him? For the Sabbath says, thou art my deliverer. Nothing's too hard for the Lord. Whatever you're facing today, whether you're saved or not saved, if you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, nothing's too hard for him. Whatever your background is, nothing's too hard for him. Whatever sins you've committed, nothing's too hard for him. And isn't it a blessing that God's available? Psalmist says, oh Lord, make no tarrying. Just come right now. Just come right now. I don't have to put an appointment on. I don't have to wait weeks and months and years. You can just come right now. You're available to me. Folks, isn't that a great wee psalm? Just when we're tempted to be fed up and scullered, tired of everything that's going on around about us and all the restrictions, that we can just take our eyes off those things and put them on God and just let God, let God, let him turn the sorrow into rejoicing and gladness. Let him turn the the feelings of abandonment and and loneliness into salvation, into his presence. Let him turn the crying into praising and the weakness into almighty God being with us. It's easy to get fed up. (laughs) It is. I do. I get fed up. I get fed up sometimes. But this psalm just reminds me today from where my help comes. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord bless you this afternoon. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much for just giving me the opportunity to bring God's word. And I trust it'll be a blessing to your heart and to your soul. The Lord bless you. Hand you back over to Eric. God bless you. Bye. Well, thank you to Pastor Hoy for sharing with us and also to Yvonne for telling us about the evangelist, Mr. Noel Grant. So there we are. That's our program for today. And we're just going to conclude our rally for this month now with a brief prayer. Lord, we thank you this day for everyone who has shared on our program. And we pray that you will bless everything that has been said and sung and the ministry of your word today. We pray for all our DCF branches and all the leaders and helpers and ask that in Jesus' name you will continue to protect us and guide us and bless us in the month that lies ahead. Be with us now and watch over us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.